Number 21, make an entry in the maintenance record of the equipment. Make an entry in the maintenance record of that equipment. Make an entry in the maintenance record of that equipment. What is the maintenance recording responsibility of a person who com complies with an airworthiness directive? It is their responsibility to make an entry in the maintenance record of that equipment. Make an entry in the maintenance record of that equipment. Number 22, okay? The second one is true. So an FAA publication says that such as a technical standard order or airworthiness directives, type certificate data sheets, and aircraft specifications and supplemental certificates are all approved data. All right, so once again, what is considered uh, approved data? FAA publications such, such as TSOs, technical standard orders, airworthiness directives, type certificate data sheets, aircraft specifications, and supplemental type certificates are all approved data. They're all approved data. All right? Thank you. Number 23, the administrator. The administrator. So a technical standard order is issued by whom? The administrator. The administrator. Okay? Number 24, okay, they're both true, right? So regarding both of these statements, the Air, uh, Air Transport Association of America, which is the ATA, specification number 100 establishes a standard for the presentation of technical data in maintenance manuals. Also, it divides the aircraft into numbered systems and subsystems in order to simplify loca locating maintenance instructions. So once again, the ATA, so A Air Transport Association, ATA, right? Specification number 100. It'll establish a standard for a presentation of technical data in maintenance manuals. So when you're looking at your maintenance manuals, you will notice a whole bunch of different numbers on the left hand side, right? So you got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 32, 33, okay? And it'll tell you that universally you have uh, fiber inspections, right? Six is uh, dimensions and locations, right? Uh, you have uh, 12 is servicing, uh, 33 is lights. You get the drift, 32 landing gear, okay? That's exactly what we're trying to say. The ATA specification 100, it'll establish a standard for presentation of technical data and divides the aircraft into numbered systems and subsystems in order to simpli simplify location of maintenance instructions. 49 APU, 70, uh, 70, 71 is uh, aircraft engines. All right, let's continue on here. Number 25, provide information about aircraft problems and suggested corrective actions provide information about aircraft problems and suggested corrections actions. So an aviation maintenance alert formerly was known as general aviation airworthiness alerts. Now they're considered aviation maintenance alerts. They provide information about aircraft problems and suggested, suggested keyword suggested corrective actions. So are they mandatory? They're not gonna be mandatory. We'll probably see that question later. They are suggested corrective actions, okay? Number 26, we have another figure. So referring to sit figure 62, 62A, and 62B, all right, as necessary, which doublers require heat treatment before installation? Well, the doubler, you will see that it's the dash 102. All right, when you go through and you'll see, it'll tell you line 102, all right? Dash 102, dash 102, okay? 
Number 27, we have the same figures. It's in the same figure, 62, A and B, how many parts will be needed for the fabricated by the mechanic in the construction and installation of one doubler? Well, you're gonna have to have three parts fabricated by the mechanic. And where are you gonna find that? Right there, in, in your figures. It'll tell you specifically how many figures, uh, parts you're gonna need to mechanically um, fabricate by the mechanic during the installation. Three. Number 28, 101 in the same figures. So in the same figures, using only the information given, when bend allowance and setbacks have been calculated, which doubler is it possible to construct and install? The doubler-101, dash 101, dash 101. doubler-101, dash 101. okay? Every single answer is in these figures. Learn to read them. Like I said, if you need your figures, look them up in your documents folder, download them, print them out, you can have them there at any time. Number 29, the dash 101, dash 101. So the dash 100 in the title block is applicable to which doubler? All right, so look at your part numbers. You'll notice that it says dash 101, okay? The dash 100 in the title block, area one, is applicable to which doubler? It's the doubler where it says part number 101. It's a dash 101, okay? Number 30, it's a 186, 186. So referring to figure 63, the aircraft has a total time and service of 468 hours. The airworthiness directive given was initially completed, complied with, at 454 hours in service. How many additional hours in service may be accumulated before the airworthiness directive must again be complied with? So if you notice here, it'll tell you that the air AD, the airworthiness directive, needs to be complied with a certain amount of time and then repetition again and again during another certain amount of time. Well, if it's already been complied with at 454 hours, it will be due again in another 186 hours. 186 hours. All right, guys, take another quiz, and I'll see you soon.